Greetings to you all today from Botswana. I have on my agenda to, to discuss Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 with you. As the Lord has laid it on my heart that I should simply share from the things we're facing here. And though I would heard a little bit of Jeremiah 1 5, obviously I read the Bible, but in terms of issues and the way people are looking at it, uh, I've come across a real stumbling block here in, in Botswana. It's something that I think I need to lay to rest. And so this has been a learning experience for me. Uh, Jeremiah 1.5 is being used um, very extensively by the prosperity gospel in our area. And I hear it many, many places. So let me just read Jeremiah 1.5 and go on from there. Perhaps you are familiar with it. I'll start with verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. God is supreme. He is in control. He obviously knows what we're going to look like and whatnot from there. However, what's being said here in this country most times, they are using this as a template and claiming that everyone is Jeremiah. In other words, everyone, this applies to everybody. Everybody has what they call a destiny. Jeremiah had a destiny. And so they're really kind of painting this picture that everyone is a child of God. This is with no salvation prior to the redemptive work. And they're saying things like we need to align ourselves with our destiny, things of that nature. And so I just wanted to take a look at this. One of the first things I hope you realize right off the bat is that this scripture in no way says that every person is under the same consideration that Jeremiah was under. I hope you can see that. It's kind of extrapolating. But as it is, as we hear it being preached in churches, they are preaching it to everyone who walks in. It's just like, this is you. This can be you. And it's, uh, it's not a great, <laughs> it's a, a really, it's a bad example. It really falls short in many ways. So the first thing is, so I get to my notes here. One of the things with the prosperity gospel that you have to realize, prosperity, of course, would mean, you know, health, wealth, success. I mean, everything is good. Um, however, one of the parts of that is what we see here in the last days, and that is they won't talk about sin or the need for repentance. Many times things will be left out, like the work on the cross, the need for forgiveness, grace, mercy, things like that that we absolutely need so that we will be in right relationship with the Lord. He does everything for us. We just have to receive, receive what he has said, and that is that we are sinners uh, by nature. And we need him to redeem us. And this is what Jesus was doing on the cross. He bore God's wrath in our place. And so what happens with the prosperity gospel and how they use this, again, they're circumventing the sin issue. They're implying that everyone is a child of God before salvation, that God has some kind of a special destiny for them that is going to be very prosperous. And this cannot be denied. Because over and over we, all, we hear this from the pulpit, and that is, when you're walking in alignment with your destiny, everything will be good. And of course, if it isn't good, it's your fault, because you're not walking the way, you know, you should be. Uh, so much for grace, now we're back into works. I hope you can see that as well. I just wanted to say, I did uh, an extensive blog on this, so we're going to put a link into the blog. So if I am not quite as thorough as you'd like, or you'd like a little bit more, please go to the blog. Uh, the videos tend to be geared toward the short side. That's what people really look for uh, in coming here. So before I begin at all, I just want to get to the conclusion. And I really thank God because, like I said, I, I wasn't in tune with this very much the way I should have been. And the Lord really led me. He really took over. And what I see is the conclusion is simply this. If you look at Jeremiah and say, and God is saying, I formed you in the belly, I knew you, etc., 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 you don't see anything like this in the New Testament. I mean, not even close. And even in the Old Testament, you don't see much like this. 
There may be a couple of passages in Isaiah referring to Isaiah, but not, but not extensively. There are problems. And so the issue is, why isn't anything in the New Testament? That's where we live today. We're not in the Old Testament. And so what it comes down to is that the law and the prophets were all geared from the Old Testament. Everything was geared to the arrival of Jesus and to his redemptive work on the cross. Everything was prophesying and leading to that. That was the purpose. And so indeed, the Lord had special prophets and workers and such in the Old Testament because it was part of his plan in revelation of things over time. But when you get to the New Testament, it says that we are sinners by nature. We're separated from the Lord. If we don't know Jesus, uh, God's wrath will lie on our heads. I mean, it's, it's not like we have a predestiny of anything at all. And so really, it's just part of the plan. And that's why this scripture from, my, from Jeremiah is rather isolated and really taken out of context. But let me just read a couple of scriptures from the New Testament that back up what I have said to you, that it was part of the plan. This was a really good one. This is from Romans 16, verses 25 and 26. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. See, it isn't very open. But now it is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Again, this is just re uh, referencing uh, what, what is going on in the present day and what has happened with the leading up by the prophets and such from the past. I read again now, this is from Luke chapter 1. Verses 68 to 70, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and he has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. I will, uh, I will list a couple more scriptures at the bottom in the description, but there's more yet still in the blog. I'm trying to keep this a little bit short. Some people wouldn't like that, though. They'd say you're oversimplifying. What about Jeremiah? And if you've been taught this way of thinking about Jeremiah 1.5 for a long time, it could be difficult to shake. But I just want you to know that even from an Old Testament standpoint, it really falls short. Uh, for one thing, Jeremiah suffered very greatly. He really did. You know, the health and wealth gospel is not about suffering. It says you're to blame if you suffer. And so Jeremiah, in his calling, in his destiny, so to speak, really was behind the eight ball. He was a blessed servant of the Lord, and God did bless him at times. But I mean, several times, people wanted to take his life. If you want to read Lamentations chapter 3, you'll get an idea of what it felt like for Jeremiah going through these things. Another thing is that Jeremiah knew his calling. God told him his calling. It was very forthright. However, what you're hearing with this prosperity gospel and the destiny teaching is that we have to find our destiny. We have to find it. And then when we're aligned with our destiny, destiny, everything will be good. But if it were really something God were calling us in, surely he would let us know and not leave us flounder. Of course, as I have pointed out before, the Bible doesn't say that all are like Jeremiah. That's another point. I want to point out that Jeremiah was an Israelite. That is, from the Old Testament view, he was one of God's people. Now you must be redeemed through Jesus Christ. But in other words, this, this statement couldn't be said in a blanket fashion toward everyone. We also see that such a thing is nowhere to be found in the New Testament, not even close, really. And that too is a problem because we live in the New Testament. And the other thing is that it lacks consistency. It really is very inconsistent even in the Old Testament. I'll read a couple verses to you uh, to start with. This one is from Hosea 9.11. As for Ephraim, their glory shall fly away like a bird from the birth and from the womb and from the conception. So even there, you're looking at something that is negative, but it's being referred to as coming from the womb. So it certainly isn't in line with the positive that's being portrayed with Jeremiah. I mean, it was positive for Jeremiah that he had a relationship with the Lord, but he was really, he was really, really under the gun. 
And then we look at Psalm 58. And I'll just read verse 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. And as we'll say in the subsequent verses, and that is, they can't be saved either. These that they're referring to, there are some like that. And that certainly isn't a very nice way uh, to be considering things. So some of the other things I wanted to point out, and that is, there's just a lack of consistency. So that even though you might see Jeremiah testifying to this, you know, and it may be so also with Isaiah, but you don't see it consistently throughout Scripture. Even with King David, you know, the Lord said that he took him while he was following the sheep. He took him from the sheep coat. He doesn't say that he had established David before he was born. We see in 1 Kings chapter 19, where uh, Elijah is going to, to bring Elisha into the fold as the Lord had instructed him. What does he do? He, Elisha is plowing with oxen, and Elijah just goes up and throws his mantle on him. It doesn't seem like Elisha had a lot of news from the birth that this would have been happening to him. We see it again in Amos, in chapter 7, verses 14 and 15. Amos said, I was no prophet, but I was a herdman and a gatherer of sycamore fruit, and the Lord took me as I followed the flock. So again, we see this. Okay, what about Jonah? Okay, Jonah was supposed to preach to Nineveh, that wicked city, and he ran away. Why wasn't he fulfilling his destiny? It seems more like Jonah was a prophet and going to do what the Lord wanted him to do, whether he liked it or not. It seems like it was a matter of choice or even as it was with the Apostle Paul. As you know, of course, Paul was, as a Pharisee, was persecuting Christians. And Jesus made a very profound interruption into his life by which, by which things changed. So this, again, is not Paul being in alignment with God's will. God pulled him into his will. Because one of the teachings I've heard in, in destiny, uh, in the destiny circles, is that unless we are in alignment with God's will, God can do nothing. And that is absolutely false. And so the whole thing with Jeremiah 1.5 is it's, it's a wonderful. Jeremiah is a wonderful book. It's the second longest book in the Bible. Uh, not by chapter, but by words. It's the second longest verse, uh, book in the Bible. And I have many times identified with Jeremiah, although in many ways, of course, I am nothing like Jeremiah. When God picks somebody, how he does that is up to him. People make choices, whether they're going to follow him or not. And even Jeremiah, he was under such a burden at one time, he tried uh, to buck his calling, but he couldn't do it. It was just, the burden was just too heavy within. He was under too much conviction. And so I just urge you to look at the blog, if you will, gives a little bit more detail. And try to remember that when people say that Everyone is like Jeremiah, Jeremiah 1.5. They're adding to the word of God. They're adding to the word that was spoken in the verse, in the chapter, and they're totally ignoring what other scriptures say. What we see is that the, that the prophets, the law and the prophets, were all geared to preparing the way for Jesus Christ. We live in the New Testament. Let's follow the New Testament, brethren. It will be a blessing. May God bless you this day.